Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for September the 10th, 2018. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market. Then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our hypotheses. Our hypotheses are our trade plans. We do create multiple trade plans. We do not know what the market's going to do. Therefore, we create plans based on who takes control of the auction, wait for the market to open up, and then execute the plan that best suits the market. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, send me an email to quantumlyfutures at gmail.com. There's no website. There's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to, and then we do live trading and analysis during the course of the regular trading hours. Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. So take a look at yesterday, or I should say Friday. Friday was NFP. Uh, of course, it was kind of a strange uh, move uh, for non-farm payroll. Uh, we kind of drifted up into uh, the high of the uh, value area, tried to break out, failed to hold the value, then rotated back down and basically just went sideways in this you know, lower distribution from Thursday, which was pretty blunt. And, uh, and pretty ugly. But you can see that uh, the trade level levels worked uh, quite well on, uh, on Friday, regardless of the anti-move. It is Monday non-farm payroll. So the key thing with, uh, with Mondays on non-farm payroll or after non-farm payroll is they tend to be balanced and slow moving markets. But these markets have not been uh, anything but uh, acting very strangely. Uh, we did uh, complete the one time framing down. You can see that uh, we have been one time framing down and so far today we've broken the high of the uh, Friday session. That will negate the one time framing in terms of the full session. We'll have to see where we open and how we handle this high from Friday uh, at the uh, 85 level to see if the one time framing continues down. Now, if we can hold above this 71 area, uh, you know, I'm looking and targeting up here at the 97.50. If we don't hold that 71 area, uh, then we're likely to go down and test the, the month low. The month low happens to be Friday low, Friday's low at 28.65. And if we don't hold 28.65, where are we likely to go? The last place they accepted value before the breakout, and that's down here at the 58 and a quarter. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's, uh, oh, I forgot to pull up the news. Let me just grab, oh, there's, there's the news there, right there. Sorry, I did have it open. There's not a lot of news today. Um, we've got uh, CV employment trends uh, at uh, 10 o'clock. 11.30, we've got the three-month uh, and six-month bill auction. Uh, we do have uh, Bostic speaking today from the Fed. I'm not sure when it's going to be. Uh, and then we've got consumer credit from July. Uh, so very light uh, trading uh, our news. Let's just take a look at this week, what we've got going on. Monday, Tuesday. We've got uh, Housing Starts from Canada at 8.15, Red Book and, uh, at uh, 8.55. The big one on uh, Tuesday will be Jolt's Jobs. Um, and that's about it for Tuesday, Wednesday. We've got uh, PPI and Core PPI at uh, 8.30, 10.30. We've got uh, crude uh, inventories on Thursday, we've got uh, course CPI and initial jobs, new housing for uh, for Canada, 
10 o'clock, we've got uh, Fed speakers, and that's about it on Thursday. And then on Friday, we've got uh, core retail sales. And that's about it for, uh, for major news. So pretty light uh, news for the week. Each day, I like to start uh, my day with a very simple practice. I look at a macro, uh, just a simple candlestick chart. All my uh, charts are going to have a 9 EMA, a 20 SMA. And what I'm doing here is I'm just reviewing. I don't know why this keeps popping up. I'm reviewing where we are in terms of the trend. Do we have good slope and separation, uh, strength of the trend? Do Are we paralleling the 9 nicely on price? You can see this trend. Uh, was very strong, 14 months of one-time framing. February violated the one-time framing, but you can see on the monthly, we have not closed below the 9 EMA all year. And uh, this is still showing that uh, we have a very strong trend. Even if we came down into the 2756.75, okay, uh, you know, yeah, over 100 points below us, we still have not violated the trend on the monthly. Going to the weekly, you can see that again the trend is oh, the trend is still strong to the upside. Uh, good slope. We're losing a little bit of separation. I'm uh, sorry, losing a little bit of slope, not separation. Uh, I moved down to the 2840 uh, area, 42 area would test the trend but not violate it. So we still got uh, you know, more than one daily ATR below us uh, before we would even test the trend on the weekly. On the uh, daily, a little bit of a different story. We are currently right now trading in between the 9 and the 20. We're below the 20 right now. You can see we've got this one time framing down on the daily, lower highs, lower lows, and uh, Right now, we're trying to violate this one-time framing down and get back above the 9. This uh, 80, uh, 85 area is going to be very important to give us early clues in the day on whether or not we're going to go up and, uh, and uh, retrace to the micro-composite VPOC up at 97.50. Uh, if we can get above that 85, below that 85, uh, watch for that 71 area. You can see there it's showing... On the on the uh, twenty uh, on the daily that that seventy one seventy five is important as I showed on the structure. We'll go back to that chart in just a minute. Going to the four hour, uh, we were trending down. We had good slope and separation, and then we've taken that back, and we're now above the nine and the twenty. Uh, and you know we're getting uh, we're going to get a, a MA kiss here in around the eighty eighty one area, but the trend has been uh, violated to the downside on the uh, four hour. On the 30 minute, you can see that uh, we did start an upward trend coming into the European uh, open uh, and through the European session, we've been trending up, but we're now coming back and we're trying to uh, close this 30 minute below the Friday high at 85. And we'll see. It won't surprise me. Inventory is 100% net long right now in the Globex that we get a bit of a pullback. And we'll talk about where that is in just a minute. So that's the, uh, that's the macro view. Now let's take a look at the structure on a macro level as we started the session. And, you know, we had this balance here. Okay, it was a prior balance around the 2835. We accepted value a little bit higher, and uh, and they broke out, and they moved up, and they went and took out that unadjusted all-time high. Remember, we had the unadjusted all-time high at 28.87 and a quarter put in the Globex adjusted to the September contract, and our RTH high at the time was 28.84. We went and broke that. We have a, now a legit all-time high up here at 29.17.50. Will it hold? I don't know. It all depends on whether or not we come back and accept this 97. If we get back into the 2900s, then I would think that this uh, this 
17 is going to get taken out. We'll probably see it push up into the 29.30 to 29.50. But currently right now, we're below the microcomposite VPOC. Um, and we have been one time framing down on the RTA session. And we'll have to wait to see how we handle that 85. If we get above 85, first target's 89. Resistance comes in at 92, and then anything above 92 should give us a really nice push into uh, the 97.50 because there's not much up there. Uh, below 85, look for the rotation back towards the VPOC at 28, 73, 75, and of course that 71 area uh, is going to be extremely important for us to hold below it. You can actually use, I'm going to use 69.50 as my uh, key line in the sand below because below 69.50, they're likely to go for the uh, the month low and Friday's low at 65 and below 65, uh, we've got a good shot. There's not much holding us up until we get down to this 58 uh, and a quarter, which was the last price that we accepted before the breakout. So, Taking our overnight numbers right now, our overnight high is 86.75. Uh, our overnight low is down at the 73 and a quarter. Uh, you can see that that was right near uh, Friday's VPOC. And, uh, you know, we came back down and tested the 73. We do have a weak low at the uh, 73 and a quarter, but for the most part, the inventory is basically between 90 and 100 percent net long and time and price so balancing on the open would not be uh surprising look for a possible move down here into the first level i'll be watching which is going to be at this uh 27 or 2880 2779 below that uh looking for a move down if you look on friday there is a clear over underline right here at the 78 that is going to be our over underline what do i mean by that just, let me just put it in here you see that it was uh it was offering us uh, support okay and then support became resistance and uh you know we could not get back above it once we had this this was this was news, remember? Uh, this was the news from Trump uh, uh, with his tariff, another $267 billion on top of uh, the, uh, the news. The scene of the crime for that, uh, actually, it was right here, which was the news. Uh, somebody had the news early, though, but this is where the news came out. At the 77 uh, and a quarter area, which is the scene of the crime, and then, like I said, uh, I'm watching that uh, 73 area and then the 68 area. This is going to be my over underline. You could argue to use the 65, but, you know, a break through the low value, uh, the value area low is likely to give us a push down into the month low, Friday's low, uh, uh, the week low from last week and our daily ATR is down there as well. So I'm using this as my key line of the sand. Below this, I start uh, to get more to the bias to the uh, downside. Uh, come on. Okay. Uh, so our hypotheses. Well, first of all, you can see that this is a thin type profile, double distribution. Uh, middle distribution is at the 81 area. That's why I was looking at that uh, 81. That is a trade area for me as well. But it's the LVN of the double distribution on the overnight session. So balancing of the inventory down to 81.50 would be natural. It's not negative. It's just a rebalancing on the open. It's not going to give me, I'm still looking to the long side in my overall hypothesis. We do have a zipper measured move. That is a valid zipper measured move right now. Uh, and that is the key target for Hypo 1. And that's going to be up at that 28.90 and a quarter. 
and that remains valid until we get below the 2876.50. So in terms of hypotheses, hypo 1 is going to be an open option just out of range or just in range but outside of value. And this is a valid value area from Friday. And uh, if we get inside of that, that's going to be our hypo two. Uh, uh, but our hypo one is an open option, just out of range or just in range. But outside of value, I'm looking for responsive selling down here into the 8150 area and somewhere between 8150 and the 70. Uh, 877 area, I'm looking for initiative buyers to step in, rotate us up, and take out that overnight high. Then between the overnight uh, uh, high and the uh, zipper measured move, I'm looking for us to go sideways, and then I'm looking for a break above the 92 area up into this daily ATR up here in this 97 and then find sellers and rotate down and close somewhere up here in the 90 to 93 area. So hypo one, open auction just out of range or just in range but out of value, responsive selling down into the 8150 to 79, find buyers, rotate us back up, take out the overnight high, chop between the 85 and the 90 and then get a late day probe up into the 93 to 95 with a possible push into 97, find sellers, rotate back down and close above yesterday's range in the 90 to 93 area. That is hypo one. Hypo two is a open auction, just out of range or just in range, a push up into this 90 to 93 area and somewhere between 93 and 95, a uh, seeing responsive sellers stepping in, rotate us down into this over underline, and then fail this and push down, take out the naked VPOC and close the gap, chop around here and go sideways with a possible uh, probe down into the 67. Uh, I'm looking for a trip through value, okay, 80% destination trade down into the 68 if we get back into yesterday's value and then closing somewhere in balance again in around this uh, 70 to 75 area. That is hypo two. Hypo three is going to be a gap and go. We do have a gap. It's not going to be uh, much of a range gap, but it is going to be a gap. Failure to close the, the gap. Initiative buyer stepping in early, rotating us up into the 90 to 93 chopping in this area and then break that range 93 and a quarter up into the 97 chop in this try to get a late day probe into the 2900s fail and then come back and close up here in the 2890s that is hypo three hypo four is a breakdown day open auction out of range failure to get through the 93 responsive sellers take us down, take us down through value, and then fail down here and push down into the 65, chop here, get a false uh, rotation up, and then break through and get a continuation wave down back into this balance here at 2850, and then start the base here and work our way up and close somewhere uh, up here between the 65 and 68. There is a fifth hypothesis today and a very valid one and that's a open auction just out of range we fall back into range and we basically go sideways chopping between Friday's range between 85 and 65 and just going sideways our daily 20 period full session ATR is running at 2208 so currently off of the overnight low our upside ATR target is up here at 95 and a quarter. Our downside target is down here at 65. So we've got uh, range capabilities to test the month low and test up into the 95, 97 without really uh, expanding the range. Just remember it's NFP, uh, non-farm payroll Monday. Usually 
hypo five is is not outside of the realm. But I'm personally looking at hypo one and uh, a slow drift grind back up towards this uh, 90 to 95 area. All right, that's going to complete our pre-market session. I'm not going to do gold today. Um, I will get back into gold tomorrow. I've got some chart adjustments. I've got I had some chart problems over the weekend. Um, and I'm going to have to make some adjustments there. So that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.